When working with many related constants, it could sometimes be a good idea to group them and store them in one place. This is where enumerations, otherwise known as enums, come in. Hi, I'm Victor, and today in Heights Above Sea Level, we'll be looking at enums in C Sharp. Before we get started, if you want to talk more about this kind of thing, be sure to follow me on Twitch at Height Above Sea Level, where I do some live coding sessions as well as try and answer some of your questions as best I can. There isn't too much to discuss about enums, so this video won't be as long as the others. However, it uses a few things from the Booleans video, so if you're feeling confused at any point during this one, first go and watch that video, and I will link it to the top right of your screen. All right. Let's look at enums in C Sharp. Enums can be used to store related constants. But before we dive into enums, we need to look at constants first. So to declare a constant in C Sharp, you write const, that's the keyword for a constant, the type of the value, and let's say, let's say you want to work with days of the week. So we can say day one is equals to Monday. And we can make another one, const string day two is equals to, whoops, Tuesday, Tuesday, and then we can say day three, not var, but const, const string again, day three is equals to Wednesday. And just like before, we can log these to the console CW tab twice and say day three. And what should that give us? It should give us Wednesday. Control in F5. Give it a second, it's building. Wednesday. All right, so these are constants, meaning they will never change. You can change them. Even if this was a number, let's say this was a number, int, and then we said three or two. This day one is always going to be two and it can't change because you've declared it as a const, a constant. All right, now that we know about a little bit about constants, let's say we want to use them in an if statement. Remember if statements from the Booleans video? Well, we're gonna use them today. I covered it a little bit, but not enough that it should be confusing. However, if you're confused, the video is available. So let's say today is equals to Monday. All right. And now I want to say if this variable, if actually, let me show you something. If you press if and you look over here in IntelliSense, there's this square next to it. That means if you press tab twice, it's going to write out for you a code snippet. And you can see it over here on the right side. Let me type that again. If, and you see this little square and it tells you if you press tab twice, it writes for you the if statement. So I'm pressing tab once, tab twice, and then there you have it. So let's say if today is equals, remember comparison operators, to day one, then we can say right in the console, tab twice, today is Monday. And then for good measure, we can add an else statement and say, console at right line, if today's not Monday, then it's the weekend. And we can remove this. So is today Monday equals today one Monday? Yes. So today is Monday should be written on the console. Control and F5. Today is Monday. So that is all working. But let's say we made a typo in this variable or even in this variable over here, or maybe even here, let's say, we, let's, let's try it here first. So we made a typo like this and we want to compare today and day one. So at this point today is not going to be equal to day one. So this is false. And so that means it's going to say it's the weekend. And if you run that, it's saying it's the weekend, even though We've specified here that it's Monday. Now this is where we can use an enum one to store all these related values or related constants in one place. And we can also reduce the risk of making typos like this when comparing or using them for other purposes. And 
also prevent introducing unnecessary bugs in our code. But real quick, if you're enjoying the content, please consider supporting me over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Hyderabadsi level. And all Patreons get this custom Sakura theme for Visual Studio. And I have all the instructions there to help you set it up. So if you like these colors, consider supporting me on Patreon. But let's look at how we can use an enum to solve this little issue that is over here. Now to declare an enum, we say public. And this is a keyword I haven't discussed yet, but it's called an access modifier. So what access modifiers do? Well, they control who has access to what. So when you declare this as public, anything as public, it can be used anywhere in your code. In this assembly, an assembly is just like the large outer container for everything that you write. And we'll look at this later on in classes and access modifiers god willing when those videos are ready so please subscribe if you want to see them but enum we use this keyword to declare an enum and what type of enum do you want this to be you want this to be day and then call your braces you can say monday telecode is there helping me press tab tuesday wednesday thursday and friday and you can get rid of this last comma so what we're saying is that a day can either be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then let's say we have another variable called tomorrow. And we said that this is how you access a value in an enum. We say day, the name of the enum, and you'll see an intelligence here. You'll see this little symbol, and that stands for an enum. Dot, remember the dot notation to access anything inside the enum. And then this symbol, this blue one, represents the value inside the enum. Press tab to choose the top one, Monday, and put a semicolon to end the statement. So this variable tomorrow is equal to Monday. We can even write it on the console. And I will comment these out. Control K, Control C, so they're not executed. And on the console, we want to write tomorrow. Control F5. Monday. Day dot Monday. And I didn't have to worry about typos or anything like that. When, and I'm going to show you how, actually, I'm going to show you how it's going to fix this issue of worrying about typo in a second. You can also do Tuesday, Control F5, so we get the gist. Tuesday's over there. Now, let's try and do this thing that we did up here, this if statement, but using an enum. So let me remove this. If, tab twice. Let's say if tomorrow, remember tomorrow is an enum is equals to day dot tuesday we can write on the console cw tomorrow is tuesday and we can also add another else for an else statement for good measure you can say um, tomorrow is not tuesday Right, so look, tomorrow is it day dot Tuesday. Is that equals to the day enum and the Tuesday value inside it? Yes, so it's gonna write tomorrow is Tuesday. Control and F5. Tomorrow is Tuesday. So as you can see, I didn't have to worry about the spelling because that's already defined here. You see this one, I had to spell it out myself. And let's say I forgot what this is, the value, the constant for day one, and now I messed up over here and so now if i'm doing something like this three four times in the code then it can really break a lot of things everywhere but if you're using an enum you see you just need to say go into the day enum and get me the tuesday value or get me the monday value or wednesday value and then we compare the value in the enum to if you store it in a variable to the other value in the enum so that means we're comparing this the values in here to themselves and we don't have to worry about these typos and that way we eliminate that unnecessary bug that could have happened in the code and i think that's pretty much the gist of enums but one more thing as we wind up this one is not going to be a long video so one more thing as we wind up is that 
this should be in its own file. And what do I mean by that? As you can see, this is a file we're working on program.cs and it's open over here. So this enum should be in its own file like program.cs. And how do we create that? The long way is to say, right click on my first app, go to add, add a new class, and we call this down here. I don't know if you can see this, whoever the cuss is. We can call this day.cs because it includes this day enum. But the shorter way is to put your cursor on day, press alt and enter, select move type to day.cs, and as you can see, it's gone. But where is it gone to? If you look on the right over here, you see this. And if you click on it, it has the enum with it inside the file. And I can remove these comments because they're irrelevant. And how do we know this is an enum, is a file containing enum? Well, it's over here and it's over open over here. This little aster asterisk means I haven't saved, so I press Ctrl and S, it will save. And why is it called CS? Because CS is the file extension. So that means C sharp. You can make day.js, which will mean day.javascript. Uh, day.js is a JavaScript file. Day.cs is a C sharp file. But look, we can still access it here. Why is that? We declared it as public. If you declare this as private, well, we already get an error over here because we can't declare it as private and we can't even access it over here. That's why it's public. That means we can use it in other files. And the reason we separate these is because of a single responsibility principle. I can write that here. That means that every you should make sure that every class or every file is responsible for one thing and this leads to better what we call separation of concerns now if these words are sound a bit too fancy for you and they are confusing you a bit i made a video called 25 programming words many courses confuse that you can look at to bring you up to speed and these words wouldn't be so scary after all. And I will link that to the top right of your screen. And now that we have that separated in a separate file, this file can worry about enums and this program file can worry about using that enum. And that is it. That is all I had for you guys. Did you enjoy this little video on enums? Did you learn something new today? And have you used enum before, enums before or are were just curious about them? And this video helped you out. Let me know in the comments below. Also, please consider supporting me over on patreon.com forward slash height above sea level and you will get these colors, this custom Sakura theme to add to your Visual Studio editor. Also, I stream on Twitch at height above sea level if you want to talk more about this kind of thing live on stream. And if that doesn't work, you can hang out on Discord instead. Just click the link in the description below and become a member of the Water Tribe today. Thank you so much for watching and as always, from me to you, deuces.